Beth, belief systems are ways we can try to understand why people believe things that, as they do in, in groups, such as religious organizations. There may be about 10,000 different religions, even their own constellation of beliefs. Political systems, when people are wedded to a, 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 a series of beliefs that seem to be part of a, of a picture, and there are other kinds of organizations. Uh, um, most of the time this is studied sociologically in terms of the group pressure. The work that you've done originally and powerfully with false memories and how you particularly can implant memories, uh, I, I really want to see how that could affect belief systems because what is it in people's lives, in their environment that allows them potentially to have beliefs implanted in them and therefore they emerge as a member of different belief system organizations? Well, since I'm uh, an expert in the area of memory and memory distortion and how you can affect what an individual uh, believes to be true mm -hmm. about himself or herself, I know how that works. I mean, you supply people with information, you repeat the information, you have an authority figure uh, exposing people to information. These are the ways in which we get people to believe that things are true about themselves that aren't true. And What's I, an example? Uh, well, so for example, I can um, convince you that uh, I can convince you that at, when you were a child, you got sick eating strawberry ice cream. Okay. You got really sick on some occasion eating strawberry ice cream. I can get you to dwell on a little bit. How, uh, how would you do that? How would you get me to believe How would that? I get you to believe that? Well, first I would gather a bunch of information from you. I'd ha have you fill out a bunch of questionnaires about your personality, your right. thoughts about food. Then I would bring you back a week later and I'd say, we fed all, all your data into our really smart computer program and it determined that these things happened to you. You, you got really sick eating strawberry ice cream sometime in your childhood. Then I would ask you to try to think about how that might have happened, where it might have happened, where you would have been, how you would have felt. And I get many people, maybe a quarter, maybe 30%, to believe and even some to remember that they had that experience and they'll embellish it with a whole lot of detail. Sometimes they'll just have a belief that it happened I know it happened. I, sometimes they'll have very concrete, specific recollections. It happened at a birthday party uh, when I was about six years old, and certain other people were present at that party. But I've planted that belief in you. And interestingly, you don't want to eat strawberry ice cream as much after <laughs> I get done with you. Uh, so I believe that in the social world, when it comes to attitudes, when it comes to religious beliefs or political beliefs, some similar things are going on. People are supplying information. Sometimes those people have the aura of authority. Sometimes that information is repeated over and over, and it can enter somebody's awareness and invade the mind, uh, you know, almost like a Trojan horse. You're not even aware it's <clears throat> coming. And that's how you can get people to believe and be committed to things that may not be true. Because if you look at many types of belief systems and organizations, there may be some core beliefs, but most of them have a, this whole constellation of different beliefs that are all, that are all uh, uh, cemented together as if uh, with super glue. Uh, that if you tease apart, just look at them, really have nothing to do with one another. But yet the people who believe one thing believe the others as part of the system. Again, there are social pressures, which I understand. But what we're trying to see here is, are there individual uh, um, brain mechanisms of how we have memories implanted, how we remember things, be they true memories or false memories, that go into creating these kinds of belief systems? Uh, probably one of the key ingredients is, is repetition mm. and, uh, mm. and reinforcement. Is that what you find in your work? When, when you want me to, to remember that I got sick eating strawberry ice cream, you would have to have multiple times that you're feeding me things that support that false belief? I, I, can, I can plant the belief with um, 
you know, with on a single occasion, but it, it makes it even stronger if I repeat the suggestion and I expose you to something multiple times. Mm -hmm. It just enhances the likelihood that you're going to adopt this suggestion and create in your own minds a belief. And this is a belief about something that's very personal to you, uh, or even a, even a, a pseudo memory about something that relates to you. So to me, it, it seems like even an easier task mm -hmm. to convince somebody to have a belief about something that's, that's just a belief about the world. Because this is something that you're implanting in, in me and in my own past history. Theoretically, we say in philosophy, you can't change the past, but you do change the past in terms of our memories. I do. I, I, I can change your past. <laughs> So what are the implications of that? Oh, you know, I have thought about um, totalitarian governments mm. uh, that try to control the belief systems of its citizens. And um, they're using some standard psychological techniques when they do that. Mm. They repeat the message. They repeat it over and over. Uh, one cool way to get somebody to believe it is make them utter it themselves. So you, you utter the lie, you utter it over and over, mm. and pretty soon you are now a committed believer. Mm. Well, you see in totalitarian systems that um, in the past, it's not just they would want to kill the offender or exclude the offender. They, they want to have the, the offender admit their error before they kill them. I mean, it's an extra step that 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 is important for the consistency of that organization, maybe as a message to others, who knows what. But I've always been um, intrigued by the 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 need for some of those organizations to to make pe before they punish them, they make people confess or they make people believe it. Well, uh, yeah, and I I don't know that I have anything to add to. What is going on there? I mean, what is, what really is the reason for doing that? Yeah, and the and the mechanism though is seems directly related to the kind of work that you do, which is very scientific and seems very simple in terms of planting some very innocuous beliefs. Basically, what you do, you don't plant any really bad ones uh, in your subjects. But if you can do that, how much more powerful other people can do? Right, and. Out there in the real world, I mean, we have people just for an experimental session. We have them for an hour, maybe a couple of sessions. Uh, and we can go pretty far with people. We can plant false beliefs that you were lost in a shopping mall, that you were had an accident at a family wedding, that you mm -hmm. were attacked by a vicious animal, that you <laughs> nearly drowned and had to be rescued by a lifeguard. These are These are things that would have been pretty traumatic if they actually had happened. Yeah. And we can do that in a very short period of time. So out there in the real world where, where people with an agenda are working on the minds of other people over and over and over, I mean, it's got to really solidify those beliefs in those people. When you plant the memories, is it, is it always uh, when you were a child that the memory has to occur? Could you plant the memory in me that I got sick eating strawberry ice cream when I was uh, 30? as opposed to when I was six years old? Uh, well, in, in much of my work, we are planting these, what we now call rich false memories, into the minds of adults and convincing them that things happened to them in childhood. But you can convince people about more recent experiences, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So the uh, malleability of the, the human mind, the human personality, is something that really we need, all need to be aware of when we we determine what we ourselves believe. I, I think it's helpful to keep in mind that memory is malleable. Uh, and to, to especially keep in mind that just because you see someone tell you that they've got a memory and they tell it to you with confidence and they tell it to you with a lot of detail and they tell it to you with emotion, it doesn't mean it really happened. 